Hello, everybody, and welcome to Silent Podcast, a place where everything but silent. As again, I'm your host, Isaiah, back with the Big Brother Review series to talk about season 11. This should be a fun one. This is a, a very messy season. Um, you know, you either love it or hate it. Uh, this is a part of the golden era, you know, so we're here to talk about it. Um, as usual, I have two co-hosts. I have Katie coming back uh, from Big Brother Podcast. Katie, what's going on? uh not much i'm excited to be here this season is a complete mess i'm excited to dig into it all and you know Josiane and i always show up for the mess so <laughs> thank you for having me on for this one i'm excited and uh for the two two weeks in a row we got josie back josie what's going on i'm good i'm excited two times in a row i mean dang you know how it was last time and this season's even worse so <laughs> <laughs> i'm excited to get into it all right, so we're here to talk about. Uh, I don't even know how to explain this. This is the click season. Uh, mm-hmm. this is Big Brother Clicks. Uh, this is uh, Jordan and, and Jeff. Uh, there, there's a lot going on here. I don't really have one word to put into it, but chaotic. Um, but we're here to talk about it. Um, so this is just interesting to talk about at this point this is episode 13 um last episode was like the middle area um guys so now that we're here how do we feel about big brother 13 mm, sorry big brother 11 as a whole um this is comparable to big brother 13 actually it's just like a lot of randomness but how do we feel about the season overall it's been i don't know how many years it's this this aired 2009 um so it's a very long time ago which is kind of crazy but how do we feel about big brother 11 now Honestly, I don't know if it's an unpopular opinion, but I kind of love this season and I feel like it's underrated because of how wild and messy it is. I just feel like you get like everything that you want from Big Brother. It's like alliances shifting, fights, everybody's changing sides. We have rats. Everything is messy. It's just it's a lot of fun. I uh, like this season is really interesting. Like, I, I agree. There's there's no really boring week. Like, you think you can have a boring week and then something happens and you're like, what? Like, you know, there's so much going on this season. Um, I think last time we spoke, we talked we talked a little bit about, like, the saboteur twist and whatnot. And this twist, in my opinion, just made the season, in a sense. We had a lot of conflicting personalities in the same team wanting to kind of target each other, being, being forced to help each other in a way or another because if you win hoh your whole team is safe so even if you want to go after someone on your team you really can't and we start that we see that immediately with week one so and it continues for the longest time until the twist is there and even then with that twist there is still impacts later on in the jury phase so i think overall like the season with its twist making it the season is a really good season and a fun one to rewatch. I watched it with my mother and it was chaos. <laughs> it was our Christmas break. That's what we did Christmas break was watch watch the season and just be in awe of the chaos. So it's actually interesting um, looking back at it. This is the first season outside of All Stars where you're bringing in some returnees. Um, I think this is the first season that it has like a returnee and newbie aspect with it where we get Jesse, of course. Um, the other options while we're dipping into this um, were uh, Jessica from Big Brother 8. Um, we got Brian Hart from Big Brother 10. And then we got Cowboy Michael uh, from Big Brother 5. Did they hit it right? Was Jesse the correct returner that we needed for this season or did they miss the mark? I think they hit it right because of the weird obsession that some of these girls had with Jesse throughout the season. Like, I don't think we would have had a lot of the moments that we had this season if it was anybody else but Jesse. So I think Jesse is the one that we needed for sure. Love him or hate him. Mr. Spectacular has it. He has his foot on the Big Brother franchise. Okay. Yes, he I does. I mean, we kind of see him in the next season also show up as a punishment for Pandora's box. I believe it was for, yeah, uh, the workout session. But, they bring uh, him back all the time, I yes, feel like. He's a staple, I'm telling you. Mr. Spectacular, I think I, um, I think I was tweeting the Big Brother thing or whatever, and I liked one of his tweets. And I apparently he was doing like a following spree. So now he just he follows a lot of the Big Brother Twitter community as well. So even though he's like just like in his 
you know, I think it's WWE era, you know, which he kind of manifested on this show, by the way, which is crazy. Manifestation works, I guess. Um, yeah, he's always on there for sure, for sure. But yeah, I honestly, I did tweet this. I wish we would have seen Brian for Big Brother 10. I don't know what it is about him, but I just, ha he has a soft space in my heart. And he, like, he didn't have a chance with that competition. I mean, come on, be serious. Yeah. Put them in clicks, you name one of them the athletes, and then you make them do an endurance cause, and you, like, come on now. You're going off stereotypes, and then you, you do a competition, and you think that everyone else has a chance. Like, be serious. Like, the order, the boot order that we saw just made sense with the stereotypes. And so I I was sad to not see Brian get a chance to compete. I don't know. I I, I want him to actually play an actual, I don't know. I, I Maybe I just love everyone from Big Brother 10. But, yeah, I just, yeah, I wish he would have came back. Jessica could have been interesting, too. I, I'm interested to see how her personality would have fit in with that cast. I think they should have just brought them all in, to be honest, because I, I I wanted to see how that was gonna what was that, what was I gonna give? But yeah, <laughs> um, I'm actually glad Cowboy didn't get in here and like no shade of Cowboy, but Ooh, uh, I just feel like they try to shove him in our face so many years. Like he didn't get an All Stars, he didn't get in this season. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be shocked if they try to throw him in something else. But I'm just I'm glad. That were past this cowboy era. I remember he was on uh, Catfish recently. He was on Catfish. Shut up. Yes, yes. Russell Hance nominated him to go on Catfish because he was getting catfished. And then um, James Hewling showed up on it too. I don't know. This girl's trying to catfish all the Big Brother people. What a mess. Mm -hmm. what and it was recent in like the last two years or something. Later, because that's too good. Yes, <laughs> it was somewhat recent. No, because that's not the crossover show I thought of when you mentioned Cowboy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's gag movie. Oh, man. Um, I actually agree with you. I think Brian would have been fun, too. But, uh, and, and, you know, Jessica was cool. I don't know if she would have shook up this season in specific. But, um, I'm, you know, I think that we got they got it right here. I think uh, Jesse, shockingly, it was the way to go here. Um, but just to talk about some of the other twists in this season, um, we have the Big Brother clicks, which is what decided which returnee got in, of course, because every single returnee was associated with a certain click, and Jesse was the jocks. So uh, Jesse came in for that. Um, but the clicks, and this also kind of talks about the cast a little bit, um, were the athletes, the brains, the offbeats, and the populars, uh, the athletes being Jeff jesse natalie and russell the brains being chima michelle and ronnie um the offbeats being casey kevin and lydia and then the poplars being brayden jordan and laura um so how do we feel about this aspect i think we actually saw them kind of replicate this a little bit but not specifically with big brother 23 uh with the team's twist um, this is technically kind of the first time they did it, but instead, uh, you know, they tweaked it a little bit in 23, but do, uh, do we like the teams? I mean, the, the clicks twist, do we like this? I, I thought it brought some interesting dynamics. Unfortunately, um, some players specifically in the off feats, uh, group kind of took this to heart and was like, Oh, I'm like an outcast. Uh, this is just like high school all over again. Uh, you know, it was kind of tough to see at points, but I mean, you know, the, this, this season's so chaotic. It didn't really last too long, but how do we feel about it? I feel like the twists, the twist this season, the team twist was good only because most of the people on the teams did not really like each other and they didn't get along. I guess the populars were fine, but the athletes specifically, yeah. they did not like each other. So there was a lot of chaos and drama going on between them. Um, and when you see a, t a, a team called the athletes, you just assume that they're going to be the most successful team of a season of a show like this. And that was just not the case. So I think it, it added a level of just unpredictability to the season. Uh, and I, I didn't hate it. Honestly, I, I feel like Big Brother is a social experiment, right? And so for them to categorize these people in this manner is just kind of another element to the social experiment that I enjoy watching. I think that's what draws me to Big Brother is how people interact in these social situations. And to be kind of put back into this high school experience, people have different high school experiences. And you see that immediately because I think Kevin's one of the first people to be like, I hated high school. You know, it was terrible for me. And Jordan's like, well, I loved high school. And like smiling ear to ear about and like not thinking deeper into it. And that I think shows a different level because I think a lot of the people who are 
on the bottom of the totem pole in a high school setting kind of for a little bit more scrappier in that sense because they understand what it's like whereas these people who are at the top of the chain pyramid don't have to think about fighting because they're kind of in a position of power and i think that's where a lot of people actually falter and that's why i think some people are really successful even if they don't necessarily win but with how they navigate moving forward um i think one of the only people who thought outside of like their power structure was russell even though he was something else so but we can see that we could actually see that that helps him navigate further than uh other athletes per se or at least is better positioned if he didn't if he wasn't who he was as a person i'm sorry but we're gonna have to talk about it anyways but oh my god like this man is a menace so maybe if he wasn't less of a menace and he kept on with the strategy he would be in a good i think he could have won but He's a menace, so it's not gonna happen for him. Uh, Russell is one of the players that I am dying to see come back to the show. <laughs> like again, I don't know if it's an unpopular opinion, but I kind of stand Russell on this season. Like he is such a he is a menace, and I loved watching him. He made it so interesting. I think Russell's time has passed, unfortunately. But I yeah. heard rumors I around loved. All Stars time that they caught something like that, but that would have been fun. Ooh. That would have been fun. Listen, I don't think. Uh, viewers could handle a Russell in 2023 anymore. I don't, uh, they would try to cancel Russell if he asked me, but, um, I remember Russell's inspirations coming in was, uh, I think it was evil Dick, maybe mm. Dr. Will at the time, but he loved evil Dick too. So well, listen, they, they would not be able. To, I mean, evil Dick was very popular back in the yeah, day. You gotta, very... you gotta remember that he was looked at as one of the better winners, but, um, Okay, so we can start with the season breakdown. So, obviously, uh, we're going to go into week one. Obviously, this is Braden's week. Um, there's not a lot going on here, but it's, like, a lot of setup. Uh, you know, the all the clicks are battling for the returning to come in, and that person that comes in will be HOH. Obviously, the athletes win it, and Braden – I mean, sorry, Jesse comes in. He is HOH. We're going to actually see something kind of similar to Big Brother 23 where we see two teams kind of click up – Funny clicks, uh, click up and, and make an alliance. Uh, th- it's going to be the brains and the athletes. Um, they're using their minds and they're like, okay, we should get one of the populars out. So they're like, all right. Originally, the first nominees were Lydia and Chima, but instead, since they made this deal, it was kind of like a backdoor. So what they did after Russell wins POV, he vetoes one of them off, uh, that being Lydia, and they put Braden up. Um, and you know, this was a brilliant backdoor first week. Obviously, Brayden was targeted for very harsh reasons, but well-deserved. Uh, some comments that he made that rubbed some of the players the wrong way, specifically Chima. Uh, I, I love I love Kevin when and she Lydia. Being a racist. Yeah. Yes. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> she called um she called him out uh, a misogynist and a racist. Uh, I forget the specific comments he said. Um, do do you remember, Katie? Uh, I won't repeat them, but he was speaking about Kevin's heritage, Hispanic heritage, okay. uh, in a negative way. I used the slur. But he's not even Hispanic. Like that's the gag. Yeah. Well, that's what Lydia was like. He said something derogatory, and Lydia was like, "He's mm. not even Mexican. Like that's not even his heritage." So, yeah, uh, yeah it, this guy was a mess. Um, I also don't want to gloss over Technotronics happening in week one. I know you said not a lot was going on, but that's one of the most iconic Big Brother moments, in my opinion, is just te- is Technotronics. I just perfect want- up on the screen. I love it. <laughs> no, I love it. It's so good. Like Technotronics. It's the fact that Jed is literally. I don't know what that machine is. Like an elliptical. He's on an elliptical. <laughs> yes. like on an elliptical. While this grown man, Russell, is walking around the y- yard with a cup in his hand. I was like, what is happening? Like, <laughs> why are you arguing? Why are two grown men arguing? And why is one of them on an elliptical? Enough is enough. At least and he doesn't even get off the elliptical. Like, he <laughs> has the full argument on the elliptical. <laughs> and then he says to Russell, like, you spelled shotgun. And it's like, yeah, but shotgun's a word, bro. <laughs> technotronics is not a word, and Russell won. So why are you like making fun of him for spelling the word shotgun when you spell technotronics? It's just so funny to me. But to be yeah. fair, that argument kind of started out of nowhere. Nowhere. Like he, Russell just, Russell was just annoyed with Jeff. Like, I, I don't know. Like I kind of because originally, also like they wanted to backdoor Laura, 
And Jesse was like, you know, Laura's trying to use her feminine ways against, like, <laughs> use her boobs and stuff. Like, I don't like that. Well, <laughs> so I want to put her up. And Laura's like, okay, I don't know why he hates me, but I guess it's because he likes me. Like, <laughs> yeah, high school, it's all elementary school. Like, he's pulling my hair because he likes me. And I'm like, but girl, get it together. If he does not yeah. like you and he's an HOH, you need to. And it almost worked. It like kind of works for a minute, but like Britta really just closed the deal shut with that argument. But Ronnie, like, oh my god, we want to so chaotic it because Ronnie's like, oh, yeah, Brayden, um, oh, like you're gonna go up, and then Russell's calling Ronnie a rat, and then oh, it's just too. Mm. We want the spectacular. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, Ronnie comes out of the gate as a rat like he doesn't even waste any time he just starts off right away playing everybody against each other and just like he's not even doing it well he just gets caught right away uh it's just it's a mess it's a mess yeah the the big thing this week uh when it going to the vote uh they're basically it's like split right down the middle um basically i think ronnie is the decider because all the populars vote one way uh the rest of the house for a majority outside like michelle uh, vote the other um but ronnie was expected to vote chima but instead he was like yeah i'm gonna vote brayden and then tie it and jesse sends brayden out but that was a huge shock um i remember everyone specifically the popular clique were like yeah we're going after ronnie uh that's it we're done with ronnie um next thing you know Ronnie wins HOH. You know, that, that was pretty crazy. Uh, what what a way to start a Big Brother season. Um, we're going to see Ronnie. He, since like, they made it clear that they were going to come after him, so he's like, I'm going to go strike first. And he takes a shot at uh, Jeff. So he's going to put Jeff on the block, and he puts Laura up right next to him. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> with all the craziness going on in the house, uh, Jeff wins veto this week. Uh, and then Ronnie's like, all right, I'm going to put up your main squeeze, Jordan. And then, obviously, Laura goes this week. Strategically, not a lot going on here, but... There's kind of some rumblings going on within the house. Uh, Katie, what's going on? I mean, I think in Big Brother fandom, there's a lot of talk about Ronnie's HOH being one of the worst HOHs in history. And yeah. I just like, I don't really know what Ronnie was trying to do here. Ronnie was trying to do a lot. I mean, he made a pact and some alliances in the first week with both sides of the athletic crew and the populars and the brains like he just was like playing everybody off of each other and there were definitely some other people he could have put up maybe like a i don't know like a kevin or a lydia or someone that maybe he was close to them too but he made promises to russell and he also made promises to jeff and jordan and their crews and like he just completely blew it up right away for almost no reason and laura almost immediately susses him out that he was the he was the vote uh for brayden so it all just comes to a head because he just blatantly lies and says like russell is trying to get votes for laura to go or something like that like he makes up a story and then they all connect with each other in the kitchen and then russell just loses his mind and like ronnie locks himself in the hoh room for like days at a time and doesn't come out it's just like this is like the craziest thing i just feel like it's so wild yeah i don't week two it's like how can you top week one and then week two just can't come swinging i mean like them trying to figure out who flipped ronnie going to the populars and saying it's michelle yes trying to throw michelle under the bus and in his click why go one thing about Ronnie, Ronnie does not give a fuck if you're in his mm -mm. I'm sorry. Week one, he saw people, I'm a vote Chima. I don't care. Chima can go. <laughs> talk, talk about Chima in the DR. Not talk of shit. And then we get to week two. He's like, it's Michelle. Michelle, like, she, yeah, she's the one not to be trusted. Whatever. And then <laughs> I love Casey this week. I literally forgot Casey kind of existed. But there's something about his vanilla ice energy that <laughs> <laughs> like I made a tweet and I was like, Casey just gives that hip hop structure, like the '90s hip hop structure. That's a woman, and like is like weirdly dancing, and she's like, "This is hip hop," and it's really not. Like his DJ energy just gives very that. So at first I was like, "Um, no wonder I don't remember him." But he keeps it real, okay? He's like dogging Ronnie, dogging him, and I loved it. I said, "Oh, 
Ooh, okay, vanilla ice comes to the room, you know, get him, get him, get him, you know. And Laura clocked him too, and I enjoyed that because I was like, this size maybe a little slow, but they're not. And I really appreciated that. And so when Jeff and Laura went up the block, I'm like, Ronnie, why'd you promise them the world two seconds ago? Like, what what was the reason? You're gonna put them mm-hmm. up. Just bad social, like social management. Like Ronnie gives very much ev- you know those Big Brother super fans who come in and they think they have to do too much mm-hmm. because the super fans, like they feel like that they they have to run two hundred uh, kilometers per hour rather than like <laughs> walk and say hello to people and ask them what their favorite color is. Like you don't have to do all that. Like relax. I call it Ronnie syndrome. Shannon had it. Frenchie had it. He, oh, yeah. he, he was the originator for me. So like I don't know. I just feel like him get, getting power. The way he was already moving week one was a recipe for disaster. And the the house coming together in one union after this literal house division to go against Rodney, who was in the middle, like, that was crazy. Like, this man would not leave. He was eating his HOH basket. Like, poor man was miserable. But I'm like, brother, the social the social game was lacking. I don't think how he, I don't know how he thought he was going to win without that social game. I didn't, I'm, I'll never forget Kingpin Ronnie, like on the top of the ban- banister, looking down at everybody while they're yelling at him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and Russell like, following him around the house. Every time yeah. he leaves the HOH room, Russell was walking right behind him saying like, Ronnie, rat, 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 ratty, ratty, rat, rat. I mean, like, this is why I love Russell. And this is why we need a Russell back. Maybe he'd be canceled in 2023, but I'm ready for some chaotic energy like Russell's again. But, okay. Like, I don't know. I just think... The yelling, I I love how Ronnie also gaslights Laura. He's like, "Well, I was lying to protect you, and you just ruined it. You sealed your mm-hmm. own bill." I'm like, "My guy, you put her against Jordan. What are you talking about? Like, you sealed her fate. You sealed her fate. Like, I don't know. Anyways, Ronnie was something else week two. Sorry, Isaiah. Go ahead. Oh no, you're good. L- listen, it's kind of hard to explain this season. There's just a lot going on, but um, we're gonna go into the next week. Well, let's also not forget that while this was happening with Ronnie and Russell, they made a secret deal. While Russell was harassing him around the house, they made a deal to work together. I mean, it's just so wild. <laughs> That's what I mean. He was scrappy. Mm-hmm. He was yeah. a menace, but he was scrappy. Yep. I think mm-hmm. two people who are kind of forgotten from this cast specifically, other than Ronnie, I think Michelle as well. They're just like both like very uh, ratty players, in my opinion. But Yes, I agree. Um, <laughs> Michelle drag. Michelle, no, Michelle's okay. a rat too. Yeah. Michelle, Michelle is a rat. Um, I, don't, <laughs> but, I don't think she's a rat per se. I think she's a flo- not a floater because she wants some comps. But like she just kind of goes where the wind goes. I wouldn't call her a rat. She ain't loyal to nobody. Mm-hmm. I mean, Ronnie's a rat. Let's be serious. Yeah, Ronnie's, Ronnie's a, a true rat. Here and doing so well. Like you can't I mean, compare Ronnie to Michelle in terms of ratness. I, like, I am because if we if we look even in this week right after the vote, uh I think it was Chima called out. She was like, Yeah, I knew one person who voted for me. I ain't gonna drop any names, but they promised me they were gonna vote me. And then Michelle was like, Yeah, it was me. Like I, I said, you know, I, I just did what's best for my game. That that right there, oh, rat like yeah. behavior. Huh? That's a rat. She was honest. She said I did vote. No, she was she was after she got caught. But at first, she was I trying mean, to blindside Chima. It's a house vote. Like, it's a split house. Everyone knew coming into it that it was going to be either. It was going to be. But she wasn't even on that side. She was with the uh, the other group. She voted with the populars. Well, but I don't think she's a rat. I think I think if she, like, you want to call her a name, I just don't think it would be rat. Like, well, she didn't do a lot of things that are rat. Like, she's she's a fool. That was rat. Right. I think That's she a liar. Goes, I think she liar. goes. I think she tries to go. Like where she thinks the power is, and if you want to call that a rat, okay, but I don't think it's a rat. Like Ronnie is a rat. Like he's a rat. But Michelle being a rat, I don't know. Like her was her gameplay spectacular? No. Mm-mm. Like she, she just blowed her energy, but she won some comps. Like I don't know what word that would be. Maybe you still want to call her a floater. I don't know. Like, I just don't think she's I'm a gonna call her a rat. That's why I'm calling her. <laughs> okay, well, we got, <laughs> we got two different definitions of a rat. And it's okay. oh, All right. So the next week, uh, Jesse wins his second HOH, you know, three weeks. Uh, but, the, you know, Jesse didn't earn the first one. So he earns mm-hmm. this one. Um, mm-hmm. He, from the rip, 
wants to go after Casey, tells his alliance this. But first he puts up uh, Michelle, the rat, and Jordan on the block together. Uh, you know, Michelle, gung-ho, she wins her first competition this season, which is a veto, um, beat yeah. herself off. And Jesse, kind of in, in a Paul position, I'm going to be honest, at this point, you're kind of starting to see some some Paulisms here. Um, <laughs> he's like, all right, well, we get to do what I want to do. We're going to back, backstab Casey. Uh, and since Casey home, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, real quick, I forgot to bring this up earlier, but I, I'll never forget Casey in the banana costume. Hilarious. Getting evicted in the banana costume. Oh, my God. <laughs> um but uh yeah casey sent home here um but you know this we're gonna kind of see some chaos here um obviously casey and the rest of his group are down bad uh kevin who wouldn't even speak about for real um he's kind of not in the numbers but like people aren't really paying attention to him i think him and natalie are kind of starting to vibe and mesh well together um but they're just kind of trying to stay out the way jesse he's starting his alliances obviously the two team alliance is still a thing but a big thing that isn't really official is like Jesse's like uh what what's a good word for it? Jesse's groupies. And that would be like uh Lydia, uh I'm gonna say Natalie. Yeah. Um and I don't think Shima can... is in a, a little bit, but like not really. She's, She's like in and out. By yeah. association, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot just going on here. Um, how do we feel about this week, guys? Well, everybody wanted Jesse to put up uh ronnie but he's like why, why do i have to put up ronnie he didn't lie to me so i'm not yeah. putting him up so he keeps running the house ronnie's totally safe this week um yeah i don't know i think this really is the week where we start to see like you said isaiah like jesse's groupies kind of coming together and just like him in the hoh room natalie's always in that bed but they are all like five feet apart from each other i don't know mm. is this the week that lydia comes into his room and watches him sleep and is like, I love to watch Jesse sleep. Yeah. yeah. yeah this is I mean, exactly. what is happening here? What is happening here? I can't believe production let her do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? I know. <laughs> I can't. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> how about you, Josie? Um, I just want to give respect where respect is due. Casey's eviction speech. Mm, 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 mm. Calling Ronnie a dork apotamus. A word I <laughs> Hats off. And when he referenced his suit and said, Jesse has the personality and the like something of ironically a banana, I literally died. I literally had to tweet out that eviction. And I said, We don't talk about his eviction speech enough because it's so hilarious. And Jesse just like looks so out of it when they like pan to him that it's just so good. And I was like, maybe Mr. Spectacular will unfollow me after this. But the tw- it's so funny. It's so funny. I cannot not make it not funny. Like it was given what it was supposed to give. Okay. Uh, but yeah, he was funny. I loved. I love Casey's energy, bro. He just did yeah. not give a fuck. He was like, you know what? This cast, like, he's like Ronnie's a rat. Like, why are we not getting rid of this rat? Like, why are we just letting this man, like, maneuver? Like, this is exactly what he wanted. And he was calling it out. He was one of the only people to, to be real, to see yeah. real. And I, I appreciate that. So I salute you um, in the banana suit as you depart. I mean, who would have thought Michelle winning a veto, though? At that point in time, no one had their chips on Michelle. And I this know. common theme we'll start to see, okay? A lot of the girls sleeping on Michelle, but she can pull it out when she needs to. And that's something I can't wait to talk about later because I do think it's important for another maybe hot take that I will have. And Isaiah did not like my last hot take, so I, I, I have, um, I have, uh, I have something to say for Michelle. But aside from that, I mean, it was a sad week to watch. Jesse just doing whatever. Like I honestly, though, I will say, Jesse doing what's best for his game rather than what's what the house wants is a really good game move. I think that's a returnee's mindset and i don't think a not a lot of new players would think like that and so that kind of just shows what his experience has gained him in terms of like how he moves and navigates in the Mm -hmm. game so that's a very important thing that he does that i think is really cool and honestly it kind of benefits the athletes you know it's ronnie's always going to be the number one target before them so it's smart thinking on his behalf even if some people 
and the House didn't agree with it. So you know what? Overall, do I wish Casey would have gone? No. Could Jesse have picked someone else to leave? Probably, but it, like I feel like Casey couldn't be brainwashed by Jesse or couldn't yeah. be swayed by Jesse in any way. And that's why I think he gets rid of him. Like the Paul isms, as you mentioned. I <laughs> There you go. Um, so we're going to move into the next week. So Julie tells the rest of the house that uh, the clicks twist is over. Um, so everyone's individual players now. And mm-hmm. we're going to see Russell win his first HOH this season. Um, yeah, listen, it's not any surprise. Russell's made it blatantly clear throughout this entire game at this point that he does want Ryan out, Ronnie out. He's tired of Ronnie uh, slipping through the cracks. He should have been going last week. Um, and he's going for Ronnie hard. Uh, we're going to see him put up uh, Ronnie and Lydia because he's also not really vibing with Lydia that much. He thinks Lydia is a little weird. <laughs> but uh, he puts up both of them. Michelle wins her second veto of the season. Mm-hmm. Not, mm-hmm. But she was her second veto of the season. Uh, does not change the noms. And we're going to see Ronnie go. But it was a slim margin. It was a vote of four to three. Uh, you know, some of those people did try to protect him and save him this week, but it did not work out. Um, and, you know, this is the Jesse takeover, Loki. You know, like uh, they thought Lydia should have been gone. Obviously, he had the numbers because of his alliances and uh, his groupies. I don't like. I wish I had a name for him, but they they're honestly groupies. And Jesse's kind of running the show at this point. You know, I mean, uh, no skin off of Russell's back. He did not like Ronnie, even though they made a deal. And that's just where we're going to go at this point. You know, that's the direction we're going. Honestly, if it wasn't for the next week, um, (laughs) which we're going to talk about, I feel like uh, this is going to be a Jesse steamroll a little bit. It's giving Big Brother 19 vibes for a while until the next week because of production, which we'll talk about. But um, how do we feel about Ronnie's departure? I, we, I know we've been speaking about Ronnie a lot this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything we haven't said about Ronnie yet that you guys want to drop? I don't think I really have anything else to say about Ronnie. I, this is the week where Russell and Jeff kind of make a pact, right, during the HOH comp. Um, I thought it was interesting, given what happened in week one, that they were able to kind of just be like, listen – you're safe, Jordan's safe, like we're good. And and Russell keeps his word. Um, and it kind of calms down a little bit between those two or those three for a little while until a little later in the season. But um, yeah, I don't know. Not too much to say else about Ronnie, in my opinion, at least from my perspective. Yeah, no, It was his time. I, yeah, no, no. It was his time. I will say, uh, while I was tweeting about this season, I found out that Ronnie plays in orgs now. Um, he does. Husband. He does. I did not know that. I was like, okay, sir. You know what? He's a part of the community. I guess. He's a part of the Facebook streets. I've, I've seen him in a couple of oh. games. Ah, yeah. okay. That's why I haven't seen him. I'm from the Twitter streets. Um, but that that to say, I want to talk about Lydia a little bit, just because prior to this week, she's been able to use what I'm going to call the Lydia mist. I particularly find Lily Lydia strange, but yes. she has this aura. <laughs> When she needs to, maybe it's because she speaks to the men with this way. I don't know, but she speaks to them and like she just knows how to like play to their egos and put that himself. Because week one, she was gonna go up, like, mm-hmm. with Jesse. and then she kind of navigates that relationship with Jesse and curates it so she doesn't go up. Week two, she's also possibly gonna go up, and then again, she finds a way to like mystify herself and like. Vanessa and she's not on there and then Jesse wants HOH again and at this point the relationship she kind of put in place at week one we see it some more obviously we can see now that she likes him a little intensely yeah. um, and so it obviously works for her and so now we reach week four and there's nothing more she can really do to get off the block but she still manages whilst being on the block to ensure that she's not actually the person who's going to go home like regardless like even if you put her up, they actually talk during the week and she makes him feel really comfortable with him. And we kind of see this somewhat camaraderie that we hadn't seen before, which is quite interesting. And so I think Lydia does a really good job about that. And I don't think we talked about it, but I, I did want to point that out because I do think it's like a really good point that she's really good with like the guys in the house, mm-hmm. not necessarily the girls, mm-hmm. but 
I'm not gonna call her a pick me, but if the shoe fits. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I also wanted to bring up because I forgot about it, but um, where I, it was kind of here and there, but you're really starting to see the dislike of Chima and Russell for each other. They start oh, arguing yeah. a lot too. They uh, have such wish... a weird relationship because she's like yeah. in bed with him a little bit. She's possessive over him. He calls her like <laughs> the possessive girlfriend that he never wanted. She's like throwing little jealous comments, but then they argue, and the way that they argue is so wild that like he's calling her a bitch. They're getting in each other's faces. It's yeah. like they are like face to face screaming in each other's faces. She Talk actually, and I don't know if it's this week but she calls him a terrorist which i thought was like yeah. so gross of her to do obviously he's yeah. middle eastern and it's just like that was like really gross and then he was like oh you're gonna throw racist stuff at me and she was like i'm not talking about your race i don't know it was just like it got real nasty between them real quick it went from like flirting weird to like real nasty <laughs> i think i think that's where like i that's why that's so confusing so they they're actually i as someone who loves to read books and loves a good trope i've never actually seen lovers to enemies only enemies to lovers and so for them to go to like flirting to each other like the week prior and like blah 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 and then all of a sudden just yelling at each other i got whiplash me and my mom were like yeah. what <laughs> like what is going on what just happened like you guys were literally talking about y'all want to be together blah blah, blah. you know she was saying something. I was like, "Really? You find him that attractive, sister?" All of a sudden, it's like, "Fuck him!" Da, 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 da. She, fuck her. Da, da, da. His cauliflower ears. She says like, at one point. Yeah, it, yeah, like, it gets pretty nasty. Was he not down bad for him last week? Like, there's only so many days between the two events that you you're feeling this type of way. So I literally got whiplash, and I thought <laughs> I thought it was so funny that they just go from like lovers to enemies so yeah. quickly. And yeah. then she gets HOH. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Well, yeah, that, so this is probably one of the most chaotic weeks of Big Brother history. And it's not it's the player's fault, but it's also productive. The whole show is at fault at this yeah. point. Um Chima does get her HOH. Uh she has been very blatantly clear that she's tired of Russell's antics and he wants she wants him gone. So she's going to put Russell on the block tells everybody in the meeting that, you know, Lydia is a pawn. Uh, we want Russell out. Everyone needs to get Russell out of here. Um, <laughs> and, you know, like I said earlier, Kevin and uh, Natalie have kind of been floating in the background. Mm -hmm. They've just kind of been, like, doing their own thing, keeping their eyes open. Uh, but we're going to see Kevin finally win something. Kevin mm -hmm. wins veto. Um, he was thinking about using it a couple times this week. Ends up not using it. And we're going to see Russell and Lydia be the final nominations. Now, you would think, like, you know, this is just a very easy clap. You know, Russell's going to go home, right? You're wrong. Because Jeff actually gets a coup d'etat. I totally forgot to, to mention that. Coup, coup d'etat. Coup d'etat. Coup d'etat. As a friend, <laughs> a speaking person, I was just so frustrated. When I <laughs> coup, coup de, coup de. That is truly so funny. Oh my god! One of so that is another one of uh, Big Brother's most iconic moments to me like, is when Jeff calls it a coup de tap. So illiterate. <laughs> truly, <laughs> truly. Those like, no, technosonics. Coup de, <laughs> coup de, I'm like my guy. <laughs> maybe, maybe, and now he reaps prompters for a living i'm like oh no oh, no. yeah i mm. don't know he, he got this the week before right so america yeah. voted so yeah. he won america's vote got the power and he had two weeks to use it and he chose not to use it during russell's last hoh week. yeah uh but this is the last week that he's able to use it mm -hmm. so he uses it basically chima's hoh is null void she has zero power this week and he puts up instead uh he puts up jesse and natalie obviously like i said natalie was one of jesse's groupies uh he does not have a working relationship with her and i forgot to say at this point um natalie uh, people don't really care for natalie too much uh she's also kind of like doing this thing that she thinks is so revolutionary she's lying about her age being the youngest <laughs> person in the house and they're like oh how they let you in here oh you can't drink now like like it was so awkward yeah what a uh, what a dummy saying yeah. that you're 18 sweet I'm glad you spoke about the drinking because the gag is she was definitely drinking in the house. How did people not click into that? Like we saw her drink several times in the house and no one said a word. 
they were not thinking mm, this is illegal yeah or, yeah. yeah like Come production on. would let her do that be yeah. serious be serious like oh my god i was like what is going on but we do see a vote of three to two. Jesse going here. Um, this pays dividends for the rest of the season. Uh, you're you're going to see all of Jesse's fan club cry at the table. They afterwards. have like a funeral for him at the table. It's so <laughs> wild. And Kevin just like reads them. It's so good. In the diary room, he has like such a good diary room making fun of them. It's so like, good. Yeah. Lydia, do you not remember that he voted to evict you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Get her. Get her, Kevin. Get her. I don't know. I before we go into like the following week, I just want to talk about Chima saying it looks like me and the producers need to have. Wait, a, wait, wait. Like me and the producers need to have a little bit of a talk. Yes. <laughs> I quote that in my real yeah. life. Every, like once a week, once a week, I say me and the producers need to have a little talk. Like that is so iconic. Like that week is so good like so 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 good like obviously the the repercussions but a jesse eviction now who would have saw that coming it was too too mm, chef's kiss it like literally we get the russell and jeff b from week one an agreement week four week five that like work put into place which is credit to Russell's game, even though that man's so menace. Credit to him navigating and protecting himself in all angles, which a lot of the girls in this house weren't doing. I think Jesse was comfortable. And when you're comfortable, you usually regret it. And Natalie personally, like she was also a menace. Let's keep it real. A lot of the house members did not like her. Like, yeah, she wasn't going on the block. But people were irritated with her because she seemingly was in power or making it seem like she was in power when really she hadn't won anything. Mm -hmm. Even Russell gets frustrated with Natalie at some point. And it's like, you haven't done anything. Like, yeah. relax. It's like, why are you talking like this? I mean, they basically uh, call her Jesse's lap dog. Literally. So it's like, yeah. To Which she, I mean, she was, that's what she, that's what she was. And that's why the pendulum swing, the aggressive swing that it is to go from like, because we literally got Jesse, Ronnie, Jesse, Russell, HOHs, all of like the athlete brains alliance. And then Chima, who's a part of this brain alliance, get like unfortunately get the repercussions. But mm -hmm. having that pendulum finally swing the other way and he picked the right people. We just talked about Matt's freaky freak move in BB12 and how mad I was about how he decided to navigate that. Like this is how you use a power properly. And the gag that this was a season before Matt's just makes me feel like Matt's even more than I thought. I'm sorry, but we're not talking about that season. But yeah, overall, mm, justice was very served. You know, well, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to ask you, well, you, you go, because I was just going to ask you guys your overall thoughts on the coup d'etat power well so yeah that's what i was going to talk your, about yeah um you know it was a cool experiment for all stars i'm glad it wasn't used mm -hmm. um i like that mike boogie used it for like a threat more than like an actual power but um i never thought that this should have been brought back uh you know they they brought it back twice now which is kind of crazy uh well no diamond power they changed it to the diamond power veto so it's so my mm -hmm. bad but um you know i just i was never a fan of this thing it's just way too overpowered uh and it just kind of screws over the hoh at the mm -hmm. end of the day it's like you can't vote uh you basically get blood on your hands for no reason um and it feels like a production's way to like kind of like oh you're my favorite let's try to get you in there a little bit you know so i'm not a big fan of the coup d'etat i think that this is probably one of the most broken uh powers in big brother history um and i just don't i'm not a huge fan of game altering to us uh but this one by far this this is almost like a super idol for survivor almost like you're you know it's it's crazy uh and it should have never been created so i'm not a fan <laughs> how about you josie i mean I think it needs to be earned a little bit better if they're going to keep implementing it. Because I don't necessarily mind it, but I don't think it should either have all the power it does or there should be a consequence on the person who uses it. So, for example, if you use, you know, the dumb, di Diamond Power Veto or the Coup d'etat, whatever you want to call it, like maybe you don't vote for the next two weeks. Like I, I need a game con like punishment that's 
as worse because then it like it feels like there's no balance in that, especially when it's not earned. Like they don't compete like you do in a veto. Like you can't like say, well, the veto's unfair because no, people compete for it. Everyone has an equal chance. Whereas like if a production member just gives it to someone like a Pandora's box or if America votes for it, then it seems like the le- like the playing field isn't fair for the people who are just playing the game with the options that they have, you know? So that's that's what I think is a bit impor- unfortunate about the power. But I don't mind it if it... I feel like I don't mind it because I think if you're a really good player of Big Brother, you can survive anything. I think you really need to be adaptable, even though that's like a crazy twist. But like, I think, I think you know, people who protect themselves like Russell did benefits from a twist like this because he put in the work prior to that to be in a situation where Jeff, who we literally fought with week one, could use it to protect him. And Jesse and Natalie neglected to look out all sides of the house to protect themselves in case a situation like this would happen. And oftentimes they give a warning to house guests. So there should be a little bit more urgency, um, especially since like this is not like an outside of the normal twist because as Isaiah mentioned it like we saw this in All Stars so overall would I recommend it no I think there's other twists that we could do that we should bring back that could be also improved as well but should bring be brought back way before the coup d'etat slash diamond power veto yeah it's just super overpowered it's it's I agree with you totally Isaiah like it just puts the HOH in the worst spot especially if Kevin did decide to use the veto and take down Lydia, Shima would have had to make three nominee nominations and not one of those three people would have gone home and she can't compete the next week. Like they should at least make her be able to compete and get another HOH or like you guys said, like give some kind of consequence, some negative consequence to using the coup d'etat. So it's not as obvious that Jeff is going to use it. Um, but yeah, I mean, testament to Russell and Russell's game and his relationship building with Jeff um, and Jordan. But yeah, I think especially when America is voting, we really have to be careful with the powers that we're giving out. And this is just so this is like a game breaking power. It just changes the whole trajectory of the game from from the moment that this is used. Mm-hmm. Yes um so i will say after this this season just takes such a big shift in like mess like i don't really know what to even call it anymore this is just a a complete shit show i'm just being honest um so as if it wasn't already (laughs) (laughs) at first well first it was just entertainment but like there's fighting every week now like uh so obviously (laughs) Michelle wins HOA, just kind of like null void, to be honest. It doesn't really count, but we'll talk about it. Um, Michelle wins her HOH. This is probably one of the shortest HOHs ever in Big Brother history, but uh, Michelle wins HOH. Uh, you know, she is putting up Chima and Nally up for the uh, eviction, um, but we don't even get to veto, first of all, because Chima pissed off ever since the coup d'etat thing. Uh, She's done not only with the players, she's done with uh, production. Production keeps calling her to do DRs. She ignores it. Uh, she's asked to do certain things like charge battery packs and stuff. She ignores it. She gets tired of them calling her, and she throws her mic pack into the swimming pool. And production was like, this is it. I'm done with Chima. And they expel her from the game. Now, you know, there has been some fan outcry because of this, because uh, we've seen people like a Jackson Mickey cheat. Uh, We've seen, um, who else has cheated? Uh, Matt from Big Brother 19. Uh, there's been plenty of people to cheat in Big Brother, but at the end of the day, I mean, she <laughs> she she destroyed property, so I, I get it. And she was blatantly ignoring them, so I'm like, uh, you know, um, do I think she should have been expelled? No, maybe they should just gave her a penalty vote, uh, but or maybe strip her of the ability to compete in the veto or something, you know, and definitely discipline her, but expel, you know, or or. And even with Michelle, it kind of wasted her HOH. And mm-hmm. instead of making her nominate someone else, they just completely start the week over. And now she's in beef with Natalie, you know. So um, I do think that this was not the best week on all facets for Chima, for production, for a lot of people. But um, how do we feel about Chima here before we go to the second half of the week? 
Well, it seemed like she wasn't only ignoring them this week. Like they showed clips of her mm-hmm. ignoring them throughout the season. Mm-hmm. And it just seemed like since her HOH and then getting put up on the block and just being just over it, it seems like she was just pissed off. And they put that thing to practice the veto. Kevin woke her up. She didn't put her mic on. Someone, I don't remember if it was Natalie or Lydia brought her the mic and she just chucks it in the, I, I don't know if it was the pool or the hot tub or whichever one she jumped. But it almost even seemed like from that point on, they were still like, go exchange your microphone. They were telling her to exchange it. It didn't even seem like that is what got her evicted um, and removed from the game. It just felt like maybe her attitude after that of just like not being apologetic and refusing to go to the diary room and telling them like, if they can come out here and talk to me, I'm not going in there to talk to them. It, at that point, she's just not willing to work with the mechanics of the game. <clears throat> so I don't, I don't know that she should have been expelled necessarily, but if she's not willing to continue on with the game in the way that it's intended and not follow the rules, like I don't really know what else you can do. Like I think some of the other cheating, that is more production allowed people to openly cheat. This is more like she's refusing to follow the rules of the game. Like she's not cheating. She's just openly refusing to follow along with production's rules as they're stated in the rule book. So like, I don't really know if she's willing to like just work with them after she throws the microphone in the hot tub or the pool or whatever, like they might've just given her a penalty vote or something or not allowed her to play in the veto. But I think because she was just unwilling to even have any remorse about it and was still like, fuck you, I'm not coming out here. Um, then I think there's no, there's no, not really another choice. I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to say that I'm a Chima apologist, but I do think there's so many factors leading up to this moment. Like, yeah, I'm showing the clips of her doing that. Not good. But at the same time, to step back into the week we had prior, she was just HOH mm-hmm. and they just like, they kind of voided, like they voided what HOH means. Like, when you're competing for the week, you're not competing for safety. You're competing to make decisions. You're competing to be in a position of power. And at this point in time, like, you know, she's already been on the block. Like, she wants to get some of that power back to her. And Russell was, like, yelling at her the week before, you know. So she had a goal. She had everything set up. The fact that Kevin didn't even use the power of veto, which is crazy to me that he didn't use on his number one ally to each mm-hmm. girl, I guess. Um, Like... She she really thought she was gonna have the week she's like perfect week and then her like one of her number one allies if not her number one ally Jesse goes and she he goes beside Natalie who's also one of her closest friends in the house and we see that they're really close especially in the following week because Natalie does everything in her power to try to protect Shima while she's having mm-hmm. this low oh yeah moment so like and Lydia too and the gag is also like. After they're like while they're doing that Paloma energy funeral scene, um, uh, like the environment is so toxic. Like these people are crying. Like literally, it felt like Paloma's like funeral all over again. And again, no one has died. Someone got evicted. Like someone, someone is evicted. Like a part of the game. There have been four other people evicted before Jesse. Like be serious. But at the same time, emotions are running high. And that environment, like. I realized this when I was watching. I got really freaking annoyed about Lydia because Lydia was like making it worse. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, especially towards Shima. Like, I was like, damn, like, sister, you guys are going through it. But in this like hour, you guys need each other. You need to support one another. And you guys are just like egging it on and making it a worse environment for you guys. So her mindset was definitely played with. And at this point, she then gets put up on the block. Like, it's just not looking good. Like, all of these things back to back to back to back to back. And I'm not saying that, you know, Chima's the strongest soldier by any means. No, like, she's not the strongest soldier. But it is a lot to take on. Now, her already having loose regard for the rules just made that poignant. Like, I feel like she thought production was already against her. So she's like, why am I going to collaborate with people who are actively going against me? So I think that was, like, a repercussion for it. So I think there is a lack of empathy, realization. Mm -hmm the production side of view um and you know i think they maybe they should have maybe like taken her aside for sure and have a conversation but given it time because everything was so fresh it's like it happened all in within the span of like 24 hours or less like it was a lot it was a lot for sure um 
and she issued an apology outside of the house any afterwards <laughs> and they they made a oh my god they made a they made a like an example out of shima because then they got the returners at some point talking about shima like dragging her she was well evicted like who was it janelle evil dick danielle and boogie came back and they were talking about mm, right in an hoh competition when they talked about house guests who were evicted they're talking about casey's merch with bananas they talked about chima's apology like they kept like bringing it in and like i feel like they don't realize i think production also lacks you know understanding in their part and her feeling that way like i'm by no means is she perfect and by no means do I encourage anything she did. Like, I think Big Brother is a once in a lifetime chance. And if you're lucky to participate in it, you need to respect production for sure. Like, you know what I mean? But damn, like, there is also a lack of accountability on production's part as well for that environment that she was in. Yeah, I definitely don't disagree with you at all about any of that. I think I think it's really hard, I would imagine, to be in a game and especially be in Shima's position of, like you said, Josie, like having what you think is about to be the perfect week and then you get the rug completely pulled out from under you and then you end up on the block the next week because of a twist that no one could ever really predict is coming. It's just hard to play a game that you don't know the rules of. And if they can just like change things like that on you, I mean, I don't blame her for not wanting to participate. I just think the way it played out, I don't know that there's another option if she's just not willing to participate in the show. I do think they should have given it a little more time, though, and had a little bit more empathy toward her because, like, obviously a game-changing thing just happened, like you said. And just, like, truly the energy in that house has been toxic from the first week. It never got less toxic. So imagine it just, like, bubbling up and boiling over to that point to get her there. I mean, I, I feel bad that it got to that point. I just don't know how, like, she could have stayed in the house at that point because, it, like, she just wasn't – she was just done. Well, there you go. Um, so to talk about the follow up, this is still the same week. Uh, you know, this is, I think, one of the few times that they've had to deal with an expulsion. Um, so they, there might be the first expulsion. No, second. No, they, that um, is Big Brother 2, the guy with yeah, the knife. Yeah, that's, that's just Justin in my mind. Or whatever. Yeah. Um, but they basically restart the week. Uh, they're going to give Jordan her first HOH, you know. And this is kind of where you're starting to see a certain pattern. Mm -hmm. um, Ever since, like, it started to look like Big Brother 19. I thought Jesse was about to steamroll the season, not going to lie. Um, and it wasn't until he was taken out it, that the phrase of, you cut the head off the snake and the rest of the body will follow, really is applied. Because after Chima's expelled, this is Lydia's week. Um, and you're starting to see this group that was beforehand really running the house kind of, like, self-implode. Um, she's going to put up Lydia and uh, Natalie. Jordan is the first HOH this season to win the veto the same week as her HOH. Um, Lydia... Uh, I think you guys spoke about it a little bit earlier, but was already kind of like breaking down. Ever since Jesse left, she's kind of lost it. She was kind of kind of going cuckoo, uh, but she got really drunk uh, in one of the moments specifically, um, and went on these rants, kind of like talk trash to a lot of people. And the house was just tired of it, so they you know they sent her packing uh, three to one, and Lydia was out of here. Lydia, uh, not one of the brighter spots of the season. This is a uh, one of the classic cases of, I think some. Kind of like Christmas, but not really, but like kind of just losing your mind the longer mm. you stay in the house, you know, you, or, or Sam. That's a, that's a better example um, mm. from Big Brother 20. Just yeah. kind of like, uh, you know, she's kind of just lost her mind in here. She got a crush, got really caught up in the sauce. And I think she kind of forgot the whole reason that she came on the show in the first place, which is the money, you know. Um, but Lydia is eliminated here. Do we have any comments or saving grace for Lydia before we move on? No, this week, this was crazy. Just the the fight that she started and the, the ranting and the like, just the raving. And she like goes up to Jeff and she's like, if you're man enough, like come in the diary room with me if you're a man. And he's like, to do what? Like talk to you while you're drunk in front of the diary room camera? Like, what are you talking about? She, she pours out the beers. It's just, yeah, this is, this is just a mess. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Bring back drinking. <laughs> yeah, they need to. Well, I'm still sorry. Do. The mimosas were mimosa wing, yeah. apparently. Like, at one point, she said, fuck the orange juice. And we just pouring champagne. 
I'm sorry. That, <laughs> it, like, I I do think, like, that was not a shining moment for her. And I don't think anyone should have those moments. But a little bit of drunk mess, like, there's, like, oh, my God. There's something about alcohol being involved sometimes that just makes things funnier to me. Like, <laughs> like I, I want to, the best example I can say about, like, using alcohol during a competition is in Big Brother Canada 6, they make the house guests, like, have a party, and they're, like, drinking or whatever. And then these people just start coming in, and they're drinking, having fun, not taking into consideration that. And Marin does one of my favorite things, where he pretends to drink and, like, encourages people to drink, and then he pours it down in the sink, and he's like, I'm pretending to drink, and it's so funny. But I like that, because I like that aspect that, like, expect the unexpected, and, like, it's still, you're still in a game. Like, you're always still in a game. So I, I love those situations because I think they're really funny. But I do think Sister Lydia needed to get it together. Like, it was, she had already been, like, beefing with Jordan. Like, she would, like, randomly, like, start fighting with people. And mm-hmm. at one point, she got really mad at Jordan in the beginning of the season. And Jordan was like, uh-uh, you're not going to talk to me like that. And she starts, like, yelling. <laughs> and I said, oh, shit. Okay, Jordan, damn. I know you had it in you. And so to see them argue again this time, I'm like, oh my God. Like Lydia, I like Lydia just likes to argue for no reason. And I don't think she cares whether or not it affects her game. But like at this point in the reality in the context of the game, your people need you. Like your people need you. Get it together and fight. Like this is ridiculous. Like Kevin is your not like, I mean, obviously her and Kevin, him not using the veto on her again, wild. But like Kevin technically still needs you and you just lost Jesse. So like, you know, like help your other ally out. And she just didn't give a fuck. Like she's mm-hmm. like, I don't care. You know, everyone can get it. It don't matter. Blah, 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 blah. Let me like be chaotic. So overall, good friends. She needed to go. Her leaving in that was it the unitard, the purple unitard? Yeah. Yeah. Go. Like leave, leave with the costume. Like goodbye i was i was kind of over it at that point i was like sister you're miserable get out of the house she was even fighting with michelle michelle was yeah. like go put your unitard on and she's like don't talk to me bitch i don't know it was crazy the way that they were <laughs> screaming at each other it was wild she just did not care and i don't know she you know she gets to reunite with jesse in the, the jury house i'm sure jesse was thrilled i jesse hated that for a bit but then they were hooking up so like who okay. <laughs> um, real quick, uh, before I forget, before I continue, what's the week that Kevin got in a fight with someone? Who was he fighting? Um, he be fighting. Sh- Low key. Huh? He'd be fighting. Kevin be fighting. So you have to be specific. There was a. It was one in the bathroom. Um, oh, that oh was a- yeah, Jordan. Jordan was it? Before? Jordan? No, I feel like it was week one because it was like Braden and people were like, okay. Oh, that just hit my mind. I was like, "Did I forget that?" Yeah. yeah. We're like, how can you hang out with him? Like, you're if you hang out with him, you like if you and Jeff just like sit there and like not do anything, mm-hmm. then you guys are as bad as him. But well, little do they know about Jeff. Well, <laughs> and like, yeah, I guess. Um, okay. He's just as you thought mm-hmm. he was. So, with three people from the other side going, uh, it's starting to look like Jeff and Jordan is about to take over this house here um we're going to see jeff win hoh um and you know he's seeing kevin and michelle i mean and natalie kiki in a little bit too much this season so he's like you know we gotta split that up so he's gonna put the both of them on the block um very correctly very smart until and this is one of the moments that made kevin an all-star um he correctly convinces him to instead of evicting him you should have Victor Russell. He's a threat. Uh, he's a big guy. He's won some competitions. Uh, he's giving off evil dick uh, energy. You know, like like that that guy can win. Why not take him out? Um, and despite Jeff and Russell's agreement of not nominating each other, it always takes one person to break it, and Jeff is the one to break it right here because um, Kevin wins his veto. Um, he takes himself off the block. Oh wait, pause. Hold on. No, he Did doesn't. I get that? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pa- Sorry, Jeff wins the veto. I'm so glad. That's why I was like, wait a minute. Jeff wins the veto, takes mm-hmm. Kevin off the block because of Kevin's convincing, um, and puts Russell up. And this is where you're going to see the downfall of Russell if it wasn't apparent already. Um, he's pissed off. He goes into the backyard while Jeff is working out one of the many times, but this mm-hmm. is the most notable <laughs> one. Um, and he basically curses uh, Jeff out. He calls him, uh, you know what, uh, uh, you know, he calls Jordan his lap dog. Uh, and <laughs> some people think uh, Jordan should have been expelled from this, which is hilarious. This is but... the most embarrassing. I have such secondhand embarrassment watching this scene of Jordan coming out, barking to him like a dog, bumping his chest, you defending her man. You? And she's like, I'll do something. He's like, what are you going to do? She's like, oh, I would do it if I wasn't inside. Girl, what are you doing to him? He's huge. What are you doing to him, first of all? And then yeah. Jeff, the man that she is trying to defend, he's just like, Jordan, what are you doing? Like, get over here. Why don't you go sit down? Why are you doing that? Like, he's not even like, he doesn't even have her back the way that she has his back. I feel like this is the week we start to see how Jeff really treats Jordan because he was kind of nasty to her too. And he was like, oh, I'm doing all the work. You're really doing nothing. He's just kind of an asshole. Um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of like when Jordan gets a little ugh, like, you're, oh, I was so funny. embarrassed watching it. It's kind of, no, I think, I think that's the thing. We're getting like, we feel the same thing. But you're getting embarrassed. I think it's funny. Because what, <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> Joy, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? You're like, five, three, grab it out. <laughs> yep. And she's like, I'm, I'm going to fight you, Russell. Like, Russell does, like, Taekwondo or whatever. Like, we- <laughs> yeah, who are you fighting? <laughs> Just to relax, to relax. Like I'm getting tears in my eyes. Like, oh shit, what do you think you're gonna do? What do you think you? That she was like, oh. I know that chest bump. It like lives in my mind. Like it just replays <laughs> over and over again. It's just like, like I am mortified for her. Do you know how many times I'm walking in my university hall and you bump into someone? Like that's the same energy. Just to relax. <laughs> like, relax, 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 relax. I think it was so funny. But here's the thing. This is what I really hate this week. Like you're kind of giving Kevin his props or whatever. But I think, you know, Kevin and Natalie say we're going to come up with this lie and say that Lonnie, like, is targeting Jeff, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And they think they mastermind it so hardcore when in reality, it's kind of the, tr- like, it's the truth. And then we find out later on that Michelle did, in fact, confirm it, like, to them. So, like, Kevin Kevin and, and Natalie didn't think they, like, they didn't eat what they thought, like, they thought they did. Like, they're like, oh, my God, we're so genius, blah, blah, blah. But it was true. And to mm-hmm. be honest, like, if I was Jeff, if I'm thinking, hmm, I can pick between Kevin or getting rid of Russell. And Russell, like, whether you want to admit it or not, had played a really good game. Kevin, like, it was hard for us to, like, I mean, let's be serious. Let's be serious for a second. He kind of always was protecting himself. Like, the way he's able to. How are you gonna be a menace? Yell at Ronnie, make a deal with him behind it. Like that's crazy. That's such a good game. I'm sorry, that is so like he's a menace. Yes, do I like like come on, but like that's so good. Like who else could do that? Like who else could do that? Yeah. People they can't couldn't even do that. Be serious. Like yelling at him back and forth, day and night, and still be good with Ronnie. Like, come on. And then he evicts Ronnie. The house target and everyone's like oh my god thank you for doing that okay okay like come on he had a good game compared to the both of them like yeah he like was yelling and being a little rude and not a little rude but like to be honest competition competition wise like kevin hadn't won anything mm-hmm. at that point yeah and i think ultimately at the end of the season kevin went to one comp so like I see why getting rid of Russell just makes sense. And I just hate the fact that they're like, oh my God, we're such big brains. Like we kind of ate this up. Like, no, you didn't. <laughs> Natalie specifically, Natalie specifically, she thought she she was going to win an Oscar, yeah. a Golden Globe, an Emmy with her acting <laughs> performance. No, uh, sister, you were not. People see right through you like they see your age. Come on, sister, mm-hmm. be serious. Be serious. I don't know. I just hated the fact that they thought they ate. They really did it. They really did it. I, I, I did not plan on showing any clips, but I just feel like I have to uh, show this. So hold on. I just, <laughs> real quick, I, I needed to show this fight real quick. Keep oh, fighting. I'm so ready. Keep. Oh, the weak one. No, no, I'm not scared of you. You think I'm scared of you? I'm scared of you. 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 I'm scared of you
I saw that. Why are you gonna make me get up? Tough girl from here. Yeah, <laughs> they're fighting battles for you. All right, so relax. why are you gonna make me why get up? Get into that. This is like move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like What a, that's so embarrassing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's so embarrassing, especially so to have your man sitting there and then just being like, why are you going to make me get up? Like, at least have her back, Jeff. At least have her back. She's fighting for you. Well, Jeff is, is corny. Oh, you're a punk, bro. I would knock you hey, out Jeff if is, I was out here. Yeah. You're, you're no, a, you a knucklehead, man. I'm like, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's rough. Just, Rough look um, for both of them, for sure. And Josie, to your point yeah. about the gameplay, like Jeff and Jordan were making a bad move getting rid of Kevin and Natalie. Like, yeah, okay, but you're right. Like, they hadn't won anything yet. And Russell was kind of like eating the season up. So, like, why not get rid of him? It would have that would have been the best move. And that's why I low key am a Russell stan. Okay, Russell stands. All right. Uh, oh, sorry. I don't know why I was on mute. I was going to say, I, I do agree that getting rid of Russell in the long term isn't good for Jeff's game, not Jeff and Jordan, Jeff's game. Mm. However, comma, at the same time, it's like, let's say, like, Russell doesn't go this week and they get rid of Kevin. Who wins the next HOH? Russell. Then Russell does what he wanted to do. Jeff. I think Jeff was going to go regardless. Like, Jeff was not meant to win that season no. regardless. Like, he had a rough, like, you know, he had a rough debut let alone yeah. trajectory. So, yeah. like, even if you got to the end, what they're going to say, what, your move was coup de ta? Like, a lot of the people in the jury didn't like that. Yeah. So, like, you know, ultimately, and they didn't like Jeff. So, like, he wasn't going to win regardless. I don't think even if he sits in the final mm -hmm. two, he wins. He doesn't get a vote. No. So, yeah, that's why I think, ultimately, the reason why I hate that, like, Nat Natalie and Kevin get credit for this move is because, like, you you did you just like you were able to guess the predictable statement which yeah. is like, they're gonna turn on each other. I mean, hello, they were arguing week one. Y'all really think they're gonna make final two chairs? Like, be serious. Like, they like Russell knew that if he had to pick between like Jordan and like and him, Jeff would have chosen Jordan. Like, come on, it's basic. Like your mm -hmm. final was six at this point. Like, you gotta swing now. Like. Come on now. I, I don't think there is credit for that move at all. And I think they their egos got way too big. Like they thought okay. they really did something. So the next week is Kevin's HOH. Uh Kevin just after getting beaded off the block uh last round, uh, we're going to see oh <laughs> that's funny. Shout out Ronnie Jr. Um, mm -hmm. but we're actually going to see after this week. Uh Kevin win HOH. Uh you know, he uh basically is look we need to go take out jeff now we you know we convinced him to take me off the block uh we need to get him out of here now um so he does nominate jeff and michelle uh you know michelle yet again is going to have to win another veto which she does she wins her third veto um and kevin rightfully so puts jeff showman's on the block jordan um between the two of them uh of course he nominates uh, I mean, they eliminate Jeff Schroeder here, and Jeff is taken out. This, you know, production was in love with this guy after this point. Um, but yes, Jeff is gone with a vote of two to one, um, and, and Jeff's out of here. I mean, obviously, you know, because I, I haven't been speaking to him about them like that. But he wins America's Favorite Player. Uh, you know, he wins two of them. Um, but Jeff. Is he a good player or is he a bad player? Some people think he's good. Uh, you know, I give him credit for being production's favorite, America's favorite, and having a coup d'etat. But, like, had it not been for that, I think he loses a season very early, you know. Um, so is Jeff Schroeder a good player? I don't think Jeff is a good player, personally. Um, I think that <sighs> – I think he was – popular for whatever reason but i don't think that he was i don't think he did any made any moves especially in this season like i just think the chaos of the season benefited him and it kind of let him fall into the background and i think the only reason why that is is because russell decided to make a truce with him and i really think russell was more of the power player of this season especially after jesse was gone like jesse i think you know his flame burned out really quickly but obviously like America just liked him and they liked this like all American couple of Jeff and Jordan. But I don't think either one of them is really a great player. And then I didn't think he was 
that much better in Big Brother 13 either. He was good at like, I guess he just has this kind of like alpha energy that people like to follow, but I don't think that makes a good player in Big Brother personally. Yeah, I think um, when I think of Jeff and Jordan, <laughs> it's a shame because I feel like the fandom, I mean, obviously I wasn't around at the time, but the fandom at the time, uh, years later, kind of looked at this couple with the season that, you know, this is a click season. You got the jock uh, and you got the popular, you know, that's where I, I feel like America kind of fell into that trope as well. They, they just love the aspect, you know, uh, Jordan's the bubbly girl who says something cute and mm -hmm. Like, oh, you're so silly. That's not what you mean. Like, it's, it's, there you go. You know, it's, yep. it feels like I'm looking at like an elementary uh, relationship at that point. But um, I think Jeff had better gameplay in 13, personally. Um, but here, you know, I, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. There's not a lot of impressive players in this season. There's just a lot of mess. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think we've Agreed. only three people from this cast actually come back, Jeff, Jordan, and Kevin. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, if that doesn't speak for itself, then I don't know what does. But, um, oh, Josiane, by the way, she just dropped, but she will be back. I think her internet just dropped her. But, okay, Katie, so we, we can carry while we wait for her. Yeah. Um, so, week nine, we're, we're coming down to the wire. Natalie wins HOH. Um, obviously... She's not going to put up her person. Oh, no, that's Cap. So sorry. Um, <laughs> my bad. Before before we even get to that, I want to talk about Pandora's box. I don't want to spend too much time on here. Yeah. Um, Pandora's box. Natalie gets Pandora's box here. Um, and well, Kevin gets Pandora's box too, right? Yes. Yes, he does. But his is like random. It's like money falling from the sky yeah. or something. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a lot easier here. Yes. Um, where I'm just trying to see the specifics real quick. All right, so Natalie basically gave up her right to play in the competition for Pandora's Box. Um, and it was basically to, I'm pretty sure it was to see her loved one. Is that correct? Yeah, her boyfriend, I think. Her came. boyfriend, yeah. And proposed to her. Yes. And that was a, they, they try to push this as a big moment for the show. Um, I think this is the first person to really ever have someone from outside of the show come in the house that's, unheard of if i'm gonna be honest with you yeah um yeah yeah this is kind of crazy um it's crazy that they would even allow this to happen really it just seems so wild to me that they would allow somebody to come in from the outside yeah i mean they've had they've allowed phone calls and stuff before this and you know sometimes to win you know if people win <laughs> um some like advantages i think like early on maybe in big brother three they yeah. you know but this is truly unheard of to me that they allow someone to come into the house mm -hmm. and then propose i don't know doesn't that change the person's mindset that's in the game yeah it does i i, I think uh Dude, I I feel like when they she came out of Pandora's box too, she was bragging about, it and everyone kind of just like disliked her for it. <laughs> they were like, "Oh, like you got to see someone we didn't." Uh, yeah, you know, flaunting around her ring to everyone. Everyone was just like, "Okay, Natalie." Like this is yeah. meanwhile like, she's supposed to be eighteen. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, Josie, uh, what's up? Sorry, I saw you just uh, came back. I'm, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, I'm glad you're all are clocking Natalie while I was away. <laughs> <laughs> so you're now engaged at 18. Like, why Why lie? Here's the thing. Some people like to lie for fun, you know, for funsies with no purpose. Natalie saying that she was 18, what purpose? I feel like we kind of talked about this in other podcasts, but we talked about the fact that, like, when people are younger, it feels like more of a target, if anything. So people lie about being older. We see this a lot with Survivor as an example. And so for her to be like, I'm going to, like, say I'm 18. Like, I don't know what she thought that ground would give her. Like, you're technically, even if you're honest about your, the age, you're still the youngest. So you can play the younger sister card if that's what you wanted to do. But you just lied unnecessarily. And obviously, we'll see later on that people don't respect it. And I just mm -hmm. feel like her coming in and, like, being like, F the veto, even though, like, she puts Kevin up like that's supposed to be your number one. Like, I don't know. It's a little, it's yeah. a little messy. It's a little like, it's just like terrible gameplay. And I, that's well, why I don't think Natalie's a good player. <laughs> well, I was just about to get to that. Um, so basically Natalie wins HOH. She basically comes up with the idea with Kevin and they're like, look, we need to convince uh, Jordan and Michelle that we're not working together. I don't know why it's final four. Who cares? But Hey, so Natalie puts Kevin on the block uh, with 
Michelle, it doesn't really matter because it comes down to veto at the end of the day. So they're like, see, I nominated Kevin. I'm, we're not working together. No one's buying it. Um, and, and truly, there's nobody else left in the house and everybody knows they're working <laughs> together. Like, what okay. is the purpose of this? So <laughs> they're doing that. Uh, Natalie kind of like leaving Kevin to dry here because since she takes Pandora box, she can't compete in the veto. Um, and Kevin's like, right, what the hell? You know, like mm-hmm. he's by himself. Uh, it, it goes from a two to one to one shot to a one to one to one shot. Luckily, Kevin does win veto here um, and, you know, saves himself and they send Michelle home. Um, Kevin had the sole vote to evict. Uh, he perceived Michelle as the biggest threat because of competitions. Um, I don't know. Does this really change anything? Does Michelle beat uh, Natalie or Kevin in the end? Because I, I feel like Kevin, I'm, well, I don't know about Natalie, but I feel like yeah. at least Kevin beats her. I don't think Jordan was the right move here because she does have friends on the jury. Um, I, I will say that this is probably a big error for Kevin and, and Natalie, but specifically Kevin, because I feel like he was more in charge here. Um, but am I wrong? Like, does Michelle going, is that the right move here? Honestly, I don't know. I mean, I don't feel like the jury really is respecting Natalie at this point because there are people in the jury that I'm surprised. I mean, just the makeup of the jury, it's almost surprising to me that Jordan ends up winning. Um, Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that necessarily changes if we replace Michelle with Jordan. Like, I think the competition wins from Michelle probably get her a few votes. Do we have as much bad blood in the jury between Michelle and some of those people? Like, I don't really think so. So she, she might have with the pre jurors. Yeah. So I think she yeah. might have been able to beat Natalie. Um, but Kevin, I think, probably would have won at the end of the day if he made it there. So I don't know that it changes too much of the outcome. I will say, because I was watching this with my mom and she had no idea what was going on. <laughs> like she didn't know, like she didn't know what she would predict. She felt as though Michelle deserved the, to win the most. Like, out of the four left, she was like, she deserves to win. I was like, really? Seriously? She's like, yeah. Like, she's like, I want her to win. I want Michelle to win. And we have, we sat down and we had, like, I had to pause on Paramount Plus. And I said, what do you mean? And she kind of broke it down for me. And I guess that makes me, like, she kind of changed my mind a little. Well, she opened my horizons, I'll say. Like, honestly, what did Michelle do to not deserve votes from the jury versus Natalie, for example? Like, mm-hmm. These people were so mad that she lied about her age. Like, yeah, jury segments that yeah. we get are then like dogging Natalie, dogging Natalie, and like Kevin at this. Oh, uh oh, I think Josie froze again. Uh, I think so too. <laughs> Josie, if you can hear me, <laughs> refresh. Uh, Josie froze again. It's okay. She'll be back. Um, but. Yes, we, we do see that. And actually, just to add on to that comment, if you're looking at the jury itself, like this is probably one of the most like weirdest juries ever. You got Jesse, um, Chima got eliminated because of or expelled. So she got they a vote though, vote. right? No, they gave it to America. So America oh. gets gets her jury vote. So it goes Jesse, America, Lydia, Russell, Jeff, Michelle, and Kevin. Because mm-hmm. we'll we'll get to the final three in a second, but Eh, I mean, I don't see why. I mean, if Jordan's, if Jordan's out, who is Jeff voting? So J- Jeff, right? Jeff, the vote for Natalie right here is Kevin. No, the vote for Jordan is Michelle, yeah. Jeff, America, and Lydia, and Jesse. I think in Jesse, the only two votes that Natalie gets are Russell and Kevin. You don't think Jesse? So I th- I feel like Jesse would vote Natalie. I think Jesse, I think Jesse would vote Michelle. I mean, if they were really as mad, because Jesse, Natalie was Jesse's big, one of his biggest allies, and he doesn't give her a vote in the end against Jordan when they weren't working together. And Jeff, Jeff is her boyfriend, and she was part of the whole situation that got Jesse out of the house, and he still didn't vote for Natalie. I think he votes for Michelle. Um, America still votes for Jordan. Lydia (laughs) is a toss-up. I mean, she got into some big fights with Michelle. I don't think she really liked her, but she probably just does what Jesse tells her to do. Yeah. Russell maybe votes for Michelle. I'm surprised Russell voted for Natalie. Mm -hmm. Jeff definitely votes for Michelle. 
So yeah, Natalie doesn't win regardless. Jordan would be in the jury, with so Jack, I think she which, would be voting for Michelle. Yeah. So I think Michelle would yeah. win actually. Which is so that's crazy. Natalie is just like not winning regardless here. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. Okay, but just to fast forward between the last uh, week, because, I mean, it's straightforward from there. Um, Kevin and Natalie just dropped the ball tremendously. Um, they, lo- they lose part two and three to Jordan. She gets the final HOH, which they did not expect. Uh, and Jordan correctly votes out Kevin Campbell here, who, yeah. in my opinion... Eh, okay, like, like I don't know if Kevin wins, to be honest. Like, um against jordan i think jordan actually might beat kevin which is wild to say but i feel like a lot mm. more people like kevin i mean i'm um, jordan and if it was kevin versus natalie obviously kevin wins but yeah. it's more like you know this is just a strange final three um i don't think it's one of the more impor- uh impressive ones i feel like this is one of the weaker final two questionings um mm. I don't think Jordan or Natalie had a good idea of what their games were. Um, and it just felt like watching paint dry, to be honest with you. Like, it was unexpected, but I was just like, here we are, you know. Um, were, were you about to say something? No, no, I, I no. agree with you. I This is a weird, this is just a weird final, final two. I totally agree. It's a weird winner. I mean, this whole season, I think it's like the right, ending to the season right this whole season has been a mess from start to finish you said it earlier but we didn't have a ton of good game players i mean who do you think is the best player this season oh let me go look at this cast <laughs> <I don't... laughs> like if i'm gonna give full body work the best player would either have to go so if you didn't get twist screwed i'm gonna say jesse okay. if we're going off of adjustability including the twist i'll say kevin um, and if I see potential, I'm going to say maybe Russell, but it's a very, very, very fine line there. So I'm mm-hmm. going to say definitely Jesse number one, and I'm going to say Kevin number two, because I feel like had it not been for the coup d'etat, uh, Jesse is just steamrolling the season. It's big brother 19 all over again. I, I, I honestly do believe that. Um, but what a mess of a season. Like, the, like this is such a bad season, <laughs> a bad cast. Uh, the, the, the best like legends i guess you would say jeff and jordan obviously because they're you know um, at the time the showman of the show yeah um i'm going to give kevin because he came back for all stars did terribly but i mean even kevin was about to play the same that he did in this season and that with nicole anthony um yep. and then i would say jesse is definitely a legend because of his his character like just who how his personality is but mm-hmm. this is a flop cast all around uh you know it's it's bad <laughs> not a lot of memorable people in this cast uh, I, I will say that yeah i don't know if i agree that they're not memorable they were just not yeah. good players like i think a lot of the yeah, stuff that happened this season was so over the top that it just like forces you to remember ronnie's bad hoh we remember shima obviously we remember lydia for just like her screaming and just being wild we remember russell because of his fights with with um with jeff like i i think this is a memorable cast i just don't think it's a and the season itself is really memorable but it's just we did not get a lot of gameplay it was just more so mess and fighting and not a lot of strategy um but i agree with you i think jesse probably is the best player overall this season i i would put russell up there with kevin but i think the rest of them not great yeah um josie i'd say you came back uh we're just we're starting to do final opinion so um yeah. what's your opinions on uh the final three um yeah I mean, I was watching the live stream while I was trying to get my computer together, so I heard some of the thoughts I were saying. I mean, honestly, like, I just, hmm. Well, Natalie was unbearable the entire time. I don't know why she thought she was going to win the way she treated the house guests in the house, the insensitive lying, when apparently that was a big part of people's relationship with her. I just thought she had terrible gameplay. There was nothing impressing, like, impressed me about her, her game. She won one competition, and she used to talk about how she's such a great athlete. Like, she didn't provide mm-hmm. anything crazy to me, and she just had a bad attitude. So I, I didn't really care for her. Kevin, I feel like Kevin's gameplay gets a lot more hype than it deserves. Like, I remember Kevin coming back on All Stars talking about, yeah, I was gonna win. 
had I like m- like made final two and I hadn't like remembered what happened. I kind of forgot who Kevin was. I don't know if that says more about him than it does about me, but hey. So, you know, with all that energy from All Stars, I'm like, okay, so this is Kevin's season. Like, Kevin eats. Like, maybe I have amnesia. No, no, no. Like, what did Kevin really do? Like, the move that he claims to have done wasn't really his game move. There was no gameplay. There was no strategy in it. So it was just like, okay. And, like, some of the moves he did, like, not saving Lydia with the veto? Like, come on. Like, there's moves to me just that just don't make sense at all. And I think he didn't realize that. And I think Natalie does uh, this good thing where she works some of the other people in the house left to protect her aside from Kevin. And Kevin doesn't even do that. So I'm mm. like, you know what? Kevin's game, there wasn't that much of it. And when I think about Lydia and Kevin, I think more of Lydia than I do Kevin. And Lydia was out way before Kevin. Uh, and lastly, Jordan. I don't know. Jordan, she was in her old, own world. At some point, like, they they had no problem showing us clips of Jordan like not understanding grade one level material. And I was like, oh, okay. And that's our winner. <laughs> and this is the winner that we have. Um, okay. She yelled a lot more than I thought. She got a little love and hip hop, which I <laughs> wasn't mad at. It just made me laugh um i don't know she like she didn't really do much for me like like what what can i say about jordan like she she the populars went out once and two and people just didn't care about jordan enough to see as her threat and that's why she needed there and even if she wanted to turn that into an argument she couldn't do that in the final questioning everything was like rainbows and sunshine and yeah i don't know like i to answer the question about who the best player was of the season, it definitely was Jesse, and that's it. Like, if Jeff didn't have that power, it was it was giving BB nineteen all over again. Like, I don't know. It, it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, starting to do final mm-hmm. questions for this. Um, overall, guys, Big Brother thirteen. Oh, I keep calling this thirteen. That's crazy. <laughs> it's the Jeff um, of it all. <laughs> Big Brother 11. Um, so where do we want to rank this season? Is this in the upper echelon, uh, the middle, or like the low tier? How do we feel about 11 here? I mean, ultimately, it's probably on the low tier. I hold it near and dear to me because it just provides entertainment from start to finish. Like this is one of the seasons that I feel like if you miss even just like a week or two of it, you're like, whoa, I missed so much just because every week there was just some other explosive something happening. So it definitely provided a lot of entertainment for sure. Um, But realistically, if we're ranking it on gameplay and winner and strategy, it's definitely closer to the bottom, unfortunately. How about you, Josie? Oh, she said her thing about, so I'll say it for you. Um, For me, this season is... I'm, I'm not going to be honest. I'm, it's going to be in like the upper portion of the low tier for me. Yeah. Um, I never really cared too much about 11. Um, I'm not going back to watch 11 that much. Uh, unless you want to see like the messy fights. Like, I think it has some golden moments with like Chima, her, like, you know, her, her, you know, her quotes every now and then. And, uh, you know, like the horrible fights with the Russell that like, <laughs> It's so cringe but hilarious at the same time. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm not really in love with anyone in this cast, to be honest. I don't really care too much for this cast. Um, I think a lot of these people kind of went into the shadows after their seasons. The only people I really see out there nowadays, I see Chima coming on Twitter every now and then. Um, Jesse, obviously, always a good time to see him on the show. And Jeff is like a news reporter now, I think. I mean, Jeff left his mark on CBS yeah. for sure. He was like the de facto after show host for a long time. Uh, but, you know, I'm just, you know, it happened. And, you know, I'm I'm good. Uh, I don't really need a rewatch. I don't really recommend this season for a lot of people, to be honest, because it's not regular it's just so weird like this is just yeah. a weird it doesn't season. feel like big brother it doesn't at all um you know just like uh season nine as well it doesn't feel like big brother either yeah. so um but that's how i feel josie how, where would you put it um it's hard because it's like the season itself is so entertaining the entire time like this show is so like this season is very iconic like 
even people even memories like or moments that you don't think about or that you forget when you rewatch the show you're like this is a moment and you're like i can't believe we even forgot about this like there's a lot of that in this season um which is why i think it's up there for me not necessarily top like top five or anything but because of how it is like the production like the drama. I love the drama. Uh, there's something about drama that just, like, yeah. Like, I don't like it in my real life. I like to watch it. So, <laughs> this was very nice for me because I'm like, yes, give me. It was giving very bad girls club. I don't know. I watch Housewives. But does this not give you Housewife energy, Katie? Yes. Um, no, Josie, I'm actually glad you said that because I think that's why I was actually thinking that when I was <laughs> saying that I enjoy the season and it's like, upper for me because I I love Real Housewives and I love Bravo and I love just messy reality shows and this is giving me that but it's not giving me what I usually get from Big Brother, Big which Brother is strategy yeah. and play, and gameplay which is it, that's why it's like such a like it's like a I don't know what the term is in 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 English but we in French it's like it's a mathematical thing where you have all these dots but there's one that's like so off on point aberrant as we call it coup d'etat like sorry but um <laughs> uh, that's literally uh, that's just what this season feels like to me because it's so good it has these interesting characters and the thing is you will never get people like this on a normal season of big brother ever again like they would never cast someone like lydia like opening jesse's bedroom like you serious they, can't. they would never have like Another Ronnie again with the HOH looking down at everyone yelling at him. <laughs> they will never have a Russell coming around terrorizing people left, right, and center. Everyone can catch it. It don't matter what, who you are, what you do. You can catch it from Russell. Mr. Pectacular, like, you'll never get that again. You will never get, I mean, come on now. Like, the closest thing we'll ever get to the season was the Paloma situation and the crying. Because that literally was so chaotic. Like, this season, Chima's explosion. Yes, yes, yes. Controversy, controversy, controversy. But when you think about it, her just flinging the mic like that, like, come on. That's kind no, of she's an icon. Like, Natalie going, oh, my God. No, she just dropped it. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was too good. Like that, it's a good season in terms of like moments. But that winner, like I like the 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 actual gameplay itself. Like there's moves that are dumb. There's not that much strategy IQ up there for me. Like damn, like it's that's what I mean. Like it's definitely better than BB12 for me. But oh, <laughs> like the show's moments carry the season for it. The fact that they casted this like beautiful cast in the sense of chaos is what makes the season okay. it's just wild to think that especially it came after season 10 which was like dan played an incredible game season 10 i mean season 10 was a mess too and my girl rennie like i love rennie so much i, I want rennie back so bad it's not but appropriate. i love her i love everything about her but i just like you know that cast had its had its moments but at least there was a dan who was able to shine as like a strategic mastermind but this season did not have its dan that's for sure at all no there you go okay so that is our review for season 11 um thank you for listening so if you like what you hear uh please check out all of our social media pages as well as our audio platforms um there are on the page here silent podcast or silent underscore podcast and please subscribe if you like what you're hearing um you can also leave a five star review on the audio platforms if you like what you're hearing but only five if it's lower than that then don't do it and just wait till you hear something that you do like but Okay, we're going to start doing our closeout. So, Josie, thank you for coming. Uh, where can people find you? Yes, you guys can find me on Twitter.com, Instagram.com, Silent Podcast, on your platforms, whatever you're, you're liking. Um, you guys can follow me. Uh, my username is the same pretty much everywhere. It's Josie on XNM, J-O-S-I-A-N-E-X-N-M. Um, I am currently watching the circle so that we can cover it for you, me and Carrie. We also have a special guest, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, it's been a while, so if you guys like talking about gameplay and strategy, haven't watched the circle, watch it now so that you can hear us podcast. That's it for me. How about you, Katie? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Real Slim Katie. You can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Real Slim Katie with an underscore at the end. I haven't been live this week, but typically I am live uh, three times per week. And I will tell you why I haven't been live this week, because I 
We have been doing a ton of stuff over here on Silent Podcast to cover the traders. I think we've been live in some form or another every day since Tuesday of last week. So we just got a lot of stuff going on. So catch us on Signed the Traders. I'm covering that with Carrie and Javier. Isaiah and Josh guested with us on the Draft Podcast. We're hoping to see if they can come back for the finale to just check in and see how our draft teams did and what our first impressions ended up being for the end of the season, which I think we're going to have a lot of thoughts to talk about. Um, So check us out there. We just covered uh, episodes five and six today. We're doing uh, episode seven and eight tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Um, You can also find me on TJ Hates Quitters. We released an episode this weekend covering uh, the Challenge Rider Dies. You can catch me on the Real uh, on the Real Housewives podcast that we do called the Cool Water Show. We release an episode on Sunday, so that's up to date as well. And I've been guesting with Jason, uh, who is covering the new Netflix show that is like Top Chef meets Big Brother called Pressure Cooker, which is super fun. So uh, we did the premiere. Isaiah was there as well, along with uh, Julia and Jason. And I did episodes three and four with him as well uh, over the weekend. So you can check that out anywhere you listen to your podcasts. The others are also on video. So check us out. All right. And finally, you can follow me everywhere at uh, 8 Ball Bangers. Um, like usual, every week we will be reviewing a Big Brother season uh, next week. I have, You know, the next couple episodes have some very fun panels. I planned them out weeks ahead. So next week we are actually taking a break from regular Big Brother to finally do uh, the three celebrity Big Brother season reviews. So I have two great guests for that one. It should be very fun. So make sure you check that out. It's going to be on Sunday instead of Monday next week. So definitely keep a lookout for that. Um, also speaking of pressure cooker, uh, we just did an interview with Gina from pressure cooker, such a great interview. i uh, shockingly that has been constantly getting views. It's almost at a thousand. So that's pretty dope. That's yeah, great. Um, yeah. So, so check that out. We got more, uh, I locked in three more interviews from people from that show. And so, uh, we're doing that the 22nd, which is Sunday. So I'm, I'm going to be booked and busy on Sunday. So, um, <laughs> uh, keep a lookout for the interviews for pressure cooker for that as well. Um, and lastly, uh, you know, you can check out anything else. Um, I'm supposed to be on the survivor New York recap this Wednesday, um, with Davey and Mark talking about that LRG. So that should also be very fun. So make sure you keep a lookout for that. But until we talk about celebrity big brother next week, have a good one. Bye. 